Swirl is the first AI-powered meta search engine released under the Apache 2.0 license, really intended to let the enterprise start solving the cross-silo problems very quickly. Let me start by just highlighting the open source project. It's linked from our website at swirl.today. The website is designed to let search developers, data scientists, engineers, search experts add other silos to existing search UIs. The whole thing's built on the Python stack, uh, including Django, which is probably the world's most popular portal. It comes with connectors to the most important open source search engines like Elastic, AWS OpenSearch, Solar, Postgres, SQLite, BigQuery from Google. Also a generic endpoint uh, connector that will talk to almost any website, including Google Programmable Search Engine, NL Research, Miro for drawings. Uh, U-Track was actually just released in version 1.10. We use JetBrains U-Track for our own bug tracking. And so that's uh, one, one search provider we've just added. And most importantly, you get spectacular relevancy, cosine vector similarity ranking based on the Spacey project. And what really is the benefit of Metasearch today? You search multiple silos with one query. Here you can see a variety of different sources, whether it's, a again, a paid source like NL Research or some database records in BigQuery or high quality content uh, you know, curated essentially by Google from the web. The relevancy results are all about aboutness. What you'll see from Swirl is that it favors the search terms at the beginning of the sentence to verify aboutness. Uh, so here, for example, our search for electric vehicle Tesla, as the results move elect the hits to the right, meaning further away from the beginning of the sentence, the relevancy score drops. And the reason for that is that when something is about something, it frequently leads the sentence. A mention of it later on may or may not be about that, and we will um, we will see. But that's the goal of Swirl always, is to quickly search all the sources systematically, find the best results from each one, and bring it back to you so you don't have to go to each engine, and you certainly don't have to remember all the different ways that those search engines work or don't work. Let me start by taking you through the repository really quickly. So here you can see it. it's uh, available on GitHub. Below, you'll see the README where uh, all of the uh, kind of basic functions are, are outlined. There's a, a feature list at the end right here and instructions to get the system running with Docker in literally two lines, right? You download this file if you have Docker running, run Docker Compose up, and you're good to go. It'll take just a few minutes for it to spin up and, and start searching. There's also a wiki full of material here, um, a little background about what MetaSearch and Federated Search are and what they're good at. There's a user guide, a quick start guide to get it installed, a user guide so you can dive right in and learn about these concepts, um, start searching. There's a developer guide, which covers how to extend the system and also build your own objects, such as your own connectors or search providers, and even an admin guide with information about all, uh, all the things needed for deployment and configuration. Once we've got uh, Swirl installed locally, as I do here, we can go point our browser to it and we'll get the Swirl homepage. It has on-ramps to documentation and support. You can also check out the version number and check the license if you wish to. What I again wanted to start by just describing is in order to start searching, the first thing we have to do is have a, at least one defined and active search provider. Good news, Swirl comes preloaded with most of the search providers that you're going to see here. So you only have to edit them, but to turn them on and add your credentials, of course, that most of them require credentials. Um, when you download Swirl, it is preloaded with our keys to the Google programmable search engine. So you, you can get results right away. Uh, please don't hesitate to join our Slack and hit uh, the support channel if you have any questions or problems with that. So taking a quick look at one search provider, a search provider is this a JSON record like this, and it's really a configuration of the key thing that we, uh, we configure, which is a connector. Connector knows how to talk to something and there are a bunch of them out of the box. Um, the request get connector talks generically to an endpoint. Here we can configure things like the URL. It'll be the same mostly for Google PSEs. We also use a mapping process to allow you to pass information to the provider and also identify the capabilities of the engine. For example, does it handle knots? Uh, this particular configuration says that it requires a minus sign in front of a term in order to not a term. Um, we'll see that in a second. Furthermore, when you configure a provider, really what you're doing is saying how to extract different parts of information from the response. So here in the response mappings, we can identify the number of results found by finding the JSON path search information dot total results and what we get back from Google. So no code required. And here's you know, an example of one configuration for uh, a Google PSE. Here's a second one. The only thing that's going to be different is this code. But as we move from Google PSEs to other systems, like here's 
NL Research. This is a high quality research um, service that you need to have a username and password to access. Here you can again see a different URL, different query template, and different parameters for the query mappings and for result mappings. So the key is, is it active? It has an active property. So long as it is, it will be ready to respond to queries. So let's go ahead and run some queries. Uh, what I'm going to do next, actually, is I'm going to show you a search object. Why would you have a search object, you may ask? A search is just a momentary thing. Well, in the world of Federation, where a search might take a few seconds to go out to 10 or 15 sources or 20 or 50 or whatever it is and rank the results, there's a life cycle. And we want to, this life cycle is actually very important because things could go wrong and we might want to look at it. When you run a swirl search, you are creating a search object that persists. Let's take a look at one. I'm actually going to go ahead and just off of the endpoint here, I'm going to run a query for knowledge management, a pretty broad query. I would expect to get lots of data back for almost from almost anything. And let's take a look at the results. So again, in three, four, five seconds, we searched uh, seven different sources. And I'm going to blow this up a little bit. I want to look at the JSON before we go look at the search UI, because I think it's key. This is the response that, as a developer, you would be trying to add to some existing user interface, some search interface that you might have, some research workflow, some machine learning publishing workflow. So the first thing is the messages. There's a nice block of these. It tells you exactly what happened during Federation. You can see each of the search engines that we targeted. You can see the number of results retrieved. Also, some of the processing that happened. So, for example, here, the cosine relevancy host result processor processed and ranked the 46 results. Now, for each of the result sets, there's a short block summarizing what we got back, what we sent to the uh, search engine, what we got back. We can actually run the search if we want to, to see the actual raw JSON that came back. So here's the raw JSON back from Google. Um, there's also a block that summarizes the information about the search we ran, including its ID, so we can always retrieve this object, the, the raw object, if we need to. We can even rerun the URL if we want. We'll talk a little bit about that later. A summary of the result information, including the search time, and then we start to get the raw results. And here's what a raw result looks like. In addition to a rank, there's a score, which is really just intended as a measure of relevancy information about the search provider and the rank, and then you'll see the title, the body, the stuff you'd expect, and then lots of information about why this, our, this result matched as it did. And I'd like to take a second over and show you some new search capability from the Spyglass UI. I'm just going to uh, start with a quick search on social media company Facebook. So this is a particularly interesting swirl query. One of the powerful things about Swirl is that you can tag your search providers, those, those uh, search providers I just showed you are already tagged, with what a given source knows about. Then in a query, you can target specific terms or the entire search to just those providers by tagging it. So here, what I'm saying is I think most search engines would be very happy with uh, the, the so social media. They probably won't know what that company colon means. So just give them the search social media Facebook but if there's a repository that knows about companies, only company names, give it that, give it Facebook. And let's see what came back. Well, actually, I think we can see. So in this UI, which is Spyglass, which we're, we're going to go into considerably more detail later, uh, or just a few minutes, Spyglass presents the JSON data in a beautiful, you know, much more what you expect type of layout. And here it's actually laid out in a really cool way, a table. I personally love tabular data. I think uh, it's very natural. My eye scans it easily. And you can see a bunch of results. I'm going to switch it right here to actually the more traditional card view or Google style view, I guess people call it. Not surprising that my first result is from ChatGPT. Let's just leave that for now. We can think of that more as an informative summary about our query more than a valuable source. We would want to verify if it's correct or not. Some of the records that have come back now are actually from the company funding record database. You may have seen this before if you've been to previous webinars. And here, it's actually hosted in BigQuery. So we've found some Facebook funding records, actually a few of them. And that's been merged, since they're highly relevant to our search, along with hot, hot information about social media company Facebook. So here's some um, results from the Pew Research Center. Here's uh, some stuff from NL Research about when's the best time to post. And you can see these have a strong uh, focus on, uh, on Twitter. I can page right through these results. 
or Facebook, I should say, not Twitter. You can see Facebook appearing very, uh, very early on, usually the first company mentioned. That's very important because if we were seeing mentions of other companies earlier, then it might be that they're just mentioned in passing. This is an example of the contextual relevancy where it, these really are about the social media company Facebook. And as I get further down in the results list now, it's much less about that. So you would expect those things to predominate really my first few results along with those funding examples, which are of course all about the company. Now, one thing we can do here as well as you'd expect is I can drill into results. So if I'm particularly curious about, let's say um, the, uh, is there an enterprise search angle on Facebook? And the answer is yes, a lot of search companies talk extensively about Facebook. And so here now, if you will, I have an enterprise search take on my query. And I can flip that into, into a table view as well. Mm -hmm.